did a lot of basically direct action type missions where we'd, you know, fly in or jump in or do an air land, hit the objective, uh, open it up for some other uh, unit to come in and do their thing. Right. And then they'd pull out, we'd collapse the objective and, and get boogie out. And, and we did a couple conventional style stuff where we jumped in and walked for a couple of days and, uh, you know, hit, hit an objective and then we'd, you know, AAR and all that. And then we'd get on buses and head back home. Right, right. Uh, and but but what I what I liked about it was you you had the sense that all of the scenarios, all the training, was actually geared towards something we might be tasked to do. Right. And, and of course, in fact, that's what happened with with Panama. Uh, I remember we did a uh, we did a mission down at, at Duke Field. So we fly, jump, uh, load on buses, and I was. I was studying for a biology test Okay, because <laughs> I was taking, I was working on my associate's degree with St. Leo. And so I'm studying, I'm sleeping, studying, eating, sleeping, study, you know, on a bus ride all the way from Duke to Hunter Army Airfield. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I remember it was, uh, <laughs> it was 17 December. I just watching, finished watching, uh, uh, it's a wonderful life with Jimmy Stewart. Yeah. Uh, I'm changing a sh- diaper on my one month old baby and the phone rings and it was this guy uh, major gary luck yeah. and we had all these code words right and he gets on the phone he's like you got to come in now <laughs> i'm like where's the code words <laughs> yeah right <laughs> and i'm like roger that sir you know i didn't ask any questions i just went in uh and then of course uh, uh three days later uh we're, we're jumping in right 20 yeah. december uh like zero zero three in the morning we're jumping in uh, to Panama. Uh, yeah, I felt the same way when I was when I was there. Like when we when we initially went into Afghanistan, it was like we it was the same thing we had been doing for like you know months and months and years and years before. So I yeah I can relate to it. So which is yeah, yeah. like you said, it's a testament to the Rangers. They train exactly how they fight, which is phenomenal. I, I used yeah, to love and, that. Yeah, and they that. they have an idea about what may or may not happen in the world, and and so they gear the training and their training scenarios towards that. Right. 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 And I, and I don't know if some of the conventional forces do or if they're just uh, more focused on their metal. All right. Right. They kind of look forward to what may happen in the world and then they kind of train to that. And then when it does right. happen, they're ready for it. Yeah. Right. Right. So, you know, and of course, they're tied into in, Intel and all that. And, you know, I mean, the higher ups have an idea. I had no idea. Right. Right. Yeah. When, when we when we did our rehearsal at Duke Field, I had no idea what was around the corner. Yeah. yeah. You know, so surprise. <laughs> yeah, did you no, it, um it, did you find that you went to you had a couple different uh like kind of false um recalls like you they call you in and then nothing would happen and you went home and did you ever go through a couple of those before the panama invasion or was it just this was it and bam you're gone no so i got a i had just gotten there and i got a call i just it must have been but i don't even know um November, December of 88, maybe. And I got a call, come on in. I'm like, okay. So I go in and uh, we actually, uh, uh, are you familiar with Sabre Hall? Uh, yeah. 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 So, so we get bivouacked over there and we know kid, we did some uh, helo type of mission down again, this time again to Duke Field, but it was helos. Wow. Oh, that's a long ass ride. I was going to say. Helicopter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 53s. <laughs> okay. Um, and so we do that. And, and so that happened and no, no other recalls than Panama happens again, we're, we're at Sabre hall and they go out to do sustained airborne training and it's just pissing all over us. Right. And up North at Bragg, they had, they're going to, they're having ice storms. Oh man. All right. And I'll, I can get to that in a minute. And so what was supposed to happen, we were supposed to jump and 45 minutes later, the 82nd was supposed to come down with this huge armada. Right. Right. Uh, but what happened was because of the ice storm, they're de-icing planes and sending them. So they were coming down in ones and twos. Oh. But I was really looking forward to seeing that. <laughs> uh, so anyways, we're doing sustained airborne training. It's pissing all over us. And they, they've finally somebody said, you know, stop this nonsense, you know, enough. <laughs> so we didn't finish it. Uh, and we went into these uh, these bathrooms to dry all our shit off. Uh, we lo- I loaded a. a Saw two 141, and we just had outboard seats, no inboard seats. It nice. was lovely. 
Yeah. And, uh, and I was actually on the same bird with Marty. And I remember uh, after waking, you know, because you get on there, you get settled in, you dry off, you warm up, you, you know, what do you do? You sleep. Right. And I remember waking up and I'm like, <sighs> and I'm, I'm closer to the bulkhead and Marty's closer to the, to the rear of the craft. And I looked down and when I looked down, Marty's looking at me <laughs> and we told that story to his wife, Peg. And she's like, oh, you guys had a moment. And I'm like, no, <laughs> fuck we did. Guys don't have moments. So right. back off. <laughs> um, you know, it was just a thing. But uh, so so we do the jump. And 500 feet's a quick ride. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got to say. It was like <laughs> one, two, three, four, check canopy. Drop ruck, hit ground, Man. you know? Um, and I remember, you know, so you got the tracers flying, which is, you know, okay. I don't think they're coming towards me, so that's good. Yeah. Hit the ground, pack my, sh they said, hey, you got to pack your shoot up because of an air land folks coming in later. Right. Okay. So pack the shoot up, um, throw it off the runway and, and make my way towards the, uh, towards our rally point for Charlie Company. So Charlie Company's objective was uh, an airborne company, uh, the okay. Pumas, second Pumas, right, of the Panamanian Defense Forces. Okay. And so we make our way to the rally point. Uh, Marty's company was, Bravo Company was responsible for uh, perimeter security of the airfield. Okay. And it was Torrios Tucuman, so it was a military and a civilian. Yeah, they yeah. had two, two runways. Uh, JMAX Company went after the Panamanian uh, a version of security police. Okay. And then Mark Talella was down there with Charlie company third bat. And, uh, and their objective was the civilian terminal. Okay. To secure that. Cause also they were trying to prevent ways for, for Noriega to get off, to get out. Right. To flee. Yeah. Yeah. And so we hit the ground and, and, uh, we rally up, make it to our, our, our little command post. Cause you know, I was hanging with the, the FSO FSNCO company commander and all the line dudes ran out and did their thing. And, uh, the FSNCO, uh, Sergeant Wood, his rucksack frapped in. So his prick 77 is gone. Oh no. And, uh, and so what happens is we're on the ground. Everything seems to be settled in and, and guys are out to their, all the line dudes are out where they gotta be. And they said, okay, hey, the 80 seconds going to be coming in, onesies and twosies. Now, of course, we jumped blacked out, right? Yeah. Um, but the, uh, the 80 second came in and they had red lights. And it was absolutely amazing how well you could see the jumpers in the door. Really? Absolutely mind blowing to me. Well, so uh, what happens is the 82nd, they're, they're just, they're, they're jumping, right? Red light, green light, it don't matter. They're getting the hell out of the plane. Right. And so they ended off DZ. And uh, so what happens is, is uh, I think Marty ended up getting the assets after the initial. Charlie Company had priority of fires, and then I think Bravo Company had it okay. afterwards. And so myself and Sergeant Wood, what we ended up doing, we had, a, we had these PSYOPs dudes with us. And they jumped in these big monster speakers uh, and they jumped uh, the, this one guy. He did the, the rehearsal at, at Duke Field. And then he jumped over to Panama. That was his seventh jump. Seventh his seventh jump was a combat jump. <laughs> Jeez. Sounds like those guys in World War II. <laughs> and so what they did was they set up their speakers and they were like, 82nd Airborne Division, come to the sound of my voice. This is, you know, the 75th Ranger Regiment or 1st Ranger Battalion. So what happened was we started getting all these guys coming out of the jungle. And myself and Sarah Wood, we would walk them out to the airfield and we'd say, take a left, continue to march because their assembly area was further south. Okay. And so we spent a, a little bit of time uh, having those guys come to our location, bring them out to the runway or the taxiway and send them south. Nice. Um, but other than that, then we just we just hung around, yeah. you know. Uh, we ended up going up into the mountains, you know, just to do some patrolling and, and met the villagers and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I can't speak to what Marty or J Mac did, right, right, because you know, they were there as well. Um, but that was it, you know, the initial jump, assemble. Uh, I, I I did have to laugh the morning after the jump, and and now think about it. There's parachutes 
up in the trees and all over the place, right? Right. Because right. the 82nd, like I said, they they were coming on one runway, and as they came across, they just kept coming. Okay. And so this dude comes driving in into the morning, and he looked like um, he looked like Art Garfunkel with the big hair. Yeah. And the and the and he had glasses, and dudes are yelling, "Stop, stop!" So they shoot the car up, and the guy hits the deck. He ducks. So one of the Spanish speaking dudes goes out, starts talking to him. They pull him out of the car. He's fine. He's not a threat. The dude was going to work. He had no idea there'd been an invasion. Oh my god. <laughs> I felt so bad for the guy. I felt yeah. so bad for the guy. He's like, oh, yeah. he came so close to like getting smoked just going to yeah. work. Yeah, and they, you know, they just fired up the tires and all that. They, they you know, they're 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 disciplined uh, enough. You know, they weren't. It's not like they were fangs out. You know, so uh, you know, and then that's it. We just hung out and spent Christmas in Panama, and and um, uh, guys rigged. Uh, what was those? Oh yeah, the the BA fifty five nineties. Right, were those the batters? So, so one of the combo whackers hooked those up to a commercial radio, and and so we got the song uh, "Feliz Navidad" beat into our brains. Oh, um, nice! Horrible. Okay. Um, I do remember we went to the town of Pacora to hand out food and gifts and all that to the to the locals. Oh, nice! Um, you know, uh, Captain Allen was the company commander, and and he ended up becoming the vice chief of staff of the army. Nice. Uh, but, uh, other than that, it, you know, again, I'm on the inside looking out and I did what yeah. I was supposed to do and came home. And I, I thought what was interesting, uh, afterwards was, you know, you get back and everybody's like, Oh, how was it? Did you shoot anybody? Did somebody shoot at you? All this kind of stuff. And I said, well, that's, you know, I, I answered, uh, you know, just like, Hey, it wasn't a big deal, you know, inside looking out, not a big deal. Just did a, what I, and I did, I did feel good about that I reacted the way I should have. Right. And, uh, but then I went home uh, to New York and I'm at the house and my father, who's never been associated with the military in any way. Uh, he says to me, he says, uh, so he go, how was it compared to your training? Right. Good and question. I thought that yeah. was, uh, absolutely germane to, to the whole situation. Sure. And, and I thought for just like a nanosecond, I'm like, you know what, Pop, with the exception of somebody literally shooting back, it was exactly like the training. Yeah. And so kudos to the Rangers for just really uh, doing things the right way in training. Sure. Right. So that was that was a really reflective moment for me. Hey!